Welcome back to Teaching It Frugal. If you guys are new here, my name is Amy and I am a 13 year teacher in Arizona. So in the last video that I did, we did a $100 grocery challenge. And one of the items on that menu that I did when I meal prepped was chicken cordon bleu. Now my family eats a normal diet. I am required now by my doctor to eat a ketogenic diet. So how in the world do you make chicken cordon bleu keto and regular for your family? So I'm going to show you how we do it in this video. Now I have not yet mastered the art of filming while I cook, so everything is still shots, but I'll be narrating in the background. So obviously the very first things that you're going to need are your ingredients. So chicken cordon bleu is traditionally made with Swiss cheese, but my family prefers provolone. So that is what we're using in our recipe. You can always change it to what your family enjoys. You also need about a pound of boneless, skinless chicken breasts. Whatever deli ham you have lying around, just make sure it's really thinly sliced. And then whatever cheese you're going to use. I've used mozzarella. I've even used like leftover um, cheese sticks that the kids forget to take in their lunch. I've used those as well. Uh, for this recipe, we are going to use really thinly sliced provolone. Uh, we also need salt, pepper, oregano, thyme, garlic, and onion powder. So those are the ingredients that I used for this first step. Later on, we're going to get to what you're going to need for the breading, and you're also going to need one egg to do the egg wash. So in this picture, you can see I'm using a wood cutting board, and I don't know about you, but I hate cleaning wood cutting boards. It feels like you can never get them clean. Uh, forgive my dog barking in the background. I will let her in in a second. Um, so I put a gallon size Ziploc bag underneath, and then I put my chicken on top and go ahead and season it. Um, for this, you already saw the seasonings in that first picture. What? First picture. So let me show you what we do after that. So as you can see, I've taken another gallon size Ziploc bag and placed it over top of the chicken. And then I'm going to use that meat mallet to pound out the chicken to pretty thin. You want it thin enough that you can handle it when you roll it up. If it's too thick, it's going to take way too long to cook and it's not going to have an even bite. So make sure you get it down as thin as you possibly can before the chicken starts to shred. I use a meat mallet. I use the smooth side. Um, you can do this. I've seen it done with a rolling pin as well, or if you have amazing knife skills, um, then you can get it down super thin with that as well. So now I've seasoned it. I've pounded it out. I've taken that top layer of plastic off so you guys can see about the thickness of what I'm going to use. And then I flip it over and I go ahead and season the back side too. So I pound it out on the front and then flip it over and pound it out on the back so the textures are uniform. So now we're going to start the layering process. So your thin sliced ham is going to go on next. You want to make sure you're not using the carving board ham um, or like ham that you've actually carved off of an actual ham unless you've gotten it like paper, paper thin. You want it as thin as you can possibly get it. So I usually use about two to three pieces of ham depending upon um, how big your chicken breast is, how big it kind of expanded to when you pounded it out. After you do the ham, you're gonna layer on your provolone. Again, you want it as thin as you can get it because remember, you're rolling these up. After you get your ham and your cheese on, your next step is to roll these up. You can go from the top to the bottom or from the bottom to the top, but any little bits that stick out the side, kind of try to poke them in as you're rolling. And then I take plastic wrap and roll those up as tight as I can, put them on a plate, and then you're gonna wanna chill them in the refrigerator for at least an hour if you can, if you can prep this the night before. So all you have to do when you come home is take them out of the fridge, they're gonna fry beautifully. Now, I have tried this recipe. This is one of my husband's favorite recipes, so I have been perfecting this for years. When I first started out, this thing looked like a porcupine because I had so many toothpicks in it trying to keep it closed while I cooked it because I didn't refrigerate it first. Turns out all you had really had to do was refrigerate it. So make sure you have them nice and tight and you want it in that refrigerator for at least an hour. If you're tight on time, you can cheat a little and you can pop them in your freezer 
for about 15 minutes and then go ahead and do your dredging and flowering process. Okay, so fast forward, it's been an hour, you're taking stuff out of the refrigerator and you're ready to start frying. So in order to do that, this is where it differentiates from a traditional frying process to a keto frying process. So I'm gonna show you the regular one first because I think that's what people are more familiar with and then I'll show you how I make it keto for mine. So for the traditional breading process, I use kind of an assembly line procedure and in that first pie pan, I put in uh, flour and then I season that flour really well with oregano, onion powder, a little bit of Mrs. Dash, garlic, I've used thyme. You can really put kind of whatever seasonings you prefer in it, but those are kind of our go-tos. And then in the second dish is gonna be your egg wash. So you're going to have one cracked egg and just enough water to kind of make it runny so everything sticks. Whisk that up real, real well. And then there's a third pie plate that's gonna come up. And in that one is where I put my regular breadcrumbs. Now for the keto version, the frying process looks just a little bit different. Instead of your flour where you're going to dredge it first, you're going to use ground flaxseed. I prefer using the golden ground flaxseed, but you can use any type. And you're going to season it just like you did the flour, only a little more aggressively. To me, it takes just a little bit more on the seasonings in order for it to not taste like health food. My goal when I cook keto is to make no one know that they're eating keto food, including me. The egg wash is exactly the same. Um, I do put a little bit of Mrs. Dash in my egg wash just because I feel like each step when I cook needs to have some flavor in it. The very last part, when we instead of the breadcrumbs, the traditional Italian breadcrumbs that you use to fry normally, I just use what they call keto panko, which really is pork rinds. And I just buy the big tub of pork rinds and I smash it all up. Um, if you have a food processor, you can put it in a food processor. I am gonna season that the same way that I seasoned my flour, again, a little more aggressively. The other thing I will sometimes add to my panko breading might be uh, the powdered Parmesan that you get just out of the shaker with the green top. You guys know what I'm talking about? So sometimes I'll add that in as well, but you wanna season each step of this as aggressively as possible. Um, I mean, don't overdo it, but I would say probably, if I had to guess, because again, I don't measure. If I had to guess, I would say at least a half to a full teaspoon of each seasoning, especially with your breadcrumbs. Okay. So at this point, before you get your hands all yucky, you're gonna get out a big skillet and some olive oil. You're also gonna get out a baking sheet and I line mine with foil just to keep life a little cleaner. The cheese does sometimes leak out the middle of it. If you refrigerate it for, like I said, at least an hour, that doesn't happen as much. So please, 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 that is a huge important step. Make sure you chill your chicken before you cook it. You are gonna preheat your oven to 375 degrees, and you are going to go ahead and turn that skillet on about medium high heat. You're just gonna brown it enough, get a crust on it, um, and then you're gonna put it in the oven. Because if you try to do the whole thing in the skillet, don't ask me how I know, um, you're gonna burn the outside and the inside's gonna be raw. So you're just getting a golden color on the outside and then you're gonna throw it in the oven. So let me show you the dredging process and the breading process and what all that looks like. And then at the end, you will get to see the beautiful product that is our chicken cordon bleu. Okay, so your dredging process, you are going to take the chicken out of its plastic wrap that you put it in. It should still be in a nice solid shape. And you're going to take it and the first thing you're going to do is you are going to roll it in your flour mixture first after your flour you're going to take it directly into your egg mixture coat it with that take it directly out of your egg mixture put it in your breadcrumbs coat it with that if you wanted to add a little bit of parmesan cheese to your breadcrumbs um, like i do with my keto ones 
that would be totally fine. It kind of bumps up the flavor a little bit, but I didn't put it in this video. So in this video, there is no Parmesan cheese. Your crust will be just a little bit darker um, if you do use the Parmesan cheese I found. From your breadcrumb pan, you can either take it directly to the skillet, or if you are making the keto ones also, I would put them off to the side as you get them uh, floured and breaded. And then that way you can do your keto ones first so your flour doesn't contaminate your oil. You're gonna do the exact same thing. It's the same process. So you're gonna do your flax seed, which is like your flour, roll it in that, get it coated, through your egg mixture next. And then your last step is to put it through those pork rind breadcrumbs that we did. And then those I would fry first, because like I said, you don't want, if you're keto, you don't want that little extra flour that comes off in the oil when you're frying it. So I do my keto ones first. Remember, you're just trying to get it crispy. You're trying to get a good color on it. And then you're gonna transfer everything to a baking sheet, a cookie sheet. I line mine with foil, like I said, because sometimes that cheese can leak out the side. So I included a picture of kind of the color you're wanting on your breading. This is the traditional breading. And then as these get done, you're gonna transfer them to your baking sheet. Your keto ones are going to be a little bit darker. That's normal. That's just because you're using pork rinds instead of traditional breading. You're going to pop these in the oven at 375 for about 30 minutes. Now, with chicken cordon bleu, it's really difficult to use a meat thermometer to see if it's done all the way through because you don't have just meat in the center. You have ham, you, which is also meat, I know, but you have cheese in there, so it doesn't give you an accurate read. I cut at least, I cut the thickest one in half to make sure that it is cooked all the way through just because I have had some previously that do not get all the way done. So please cut them in half. So this is the finished product. This is the keto version. So you can see it's a little bit darker. You can see there's bigger chunks of breading on the outside. The crunch on this is really good. Um, you really don't notice if you season it well, you don't really notice that you're not having traditional breadcrumbs. So if you're keto or if you just want to give this a try, uh, if you've got pork rinds laying around, give it a shot, see if you enjoy it. We do. Um, so this is a final picture of what the inside looks like. And you can see it's pretty ooey gooey on the inside. The chicken is cooked. The outside is super crunchy. The salad behind it looks a little sad, but that's okay. So this is a pretty frugal meal for us because I usually have the chicken breast, the ham, and some type of cheese on ham. Like I said, I've done it with mozzarella. I've done it with the provolone, which we prefer. I have done it with Swiss. I like Swiss. My husband prefers provolone. Doesn't really make any difference. So I hope you guys have enjoyed how to make chicken cordon bleu. Again, this is just our family's recipe. You guys can edit it to your family's taste. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video on how to make this frugal chicken cordon bleu meal, please go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel. If you hit that notification bell, the next time I upload something, it will let you know. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.